Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be talking about the new iPad mini, which was released last week. Personally, this is probably my favorite update from Apple's latest September event and probably the product that has the biggest upgrade in terms of value for money. I actually had an iPad mini a few years ago and really annoyingly, I left it on a plane and never saw it again. So I'm pretty excited to be using one again. It was just by far my favorite tablet though because of the compact form factor. It was basically a more advanced Kindle that you could just hold easily in one hand if you're commuting on the tube or on the train. And basically when you're traveling, it's just kind of the perfect size to take with you if you don't want to carry around a larger iPad. So what I've got here is the space gray Wi-Fi only base model version with 64 gigabytes of storage, which starts at $500 or 479 pounds. You can also configure this up to 256 gigabytes of storage and of course add cellular or the data connection if you want. I said this before though on my channel, personally I don't see the point in paying for a separate data tariff for your iPad when you can just tether from your smartphone. But that's personal preference I guess. Anyway, it also comes in three new colours, purple, pink, starlight, with of course the usual space grey as well, but that by now we're very familiar with. I have to say the purple colour does look really cool, but I'm personally not a huge fan of the pink and starlight colours. It's a shame in a way you can't get the same colours you can for the iPad Air, because I think there's a bit more choice there, and those all look pretty cool. I also kind of wish they gave you the option of having the same Sierra blue colour from the iPhone 13 Pro. By the way, if you want to watch my first impressions and unboxing of that, then take a look at this link here. In terms of the unboxing experience, it's actually pretty simple, but as ever with Apple, it's always an absolute joy to open. So in the box, you obviously get the iPad itself with the protective paper over it. Just in case some of you didn't realize, this is actually paper and not plastic, which is great, which makes it 100% recyclable. Also in the box, you get the USB-C to USB-C cable, as well as the usual instructions. And of course, we still get the power brick with the iPad, which is interesting because we don't now with the iPhone. So let's just peel this off so we can take a look. In terms of the redesign of the Mini, it's essentially now got the iPad Pro squared off edge design language that we first saw in the iPhone 4. And I absolutely love the look of it. It's essentially now a smaller iPad Air, which is great. The size is actually the same as the previous iPad Mini, but now with a larger liquid retina display, which is about 8.3 inches compared to the previous 7.1 inches. The bezels around the screen still look quite thick, but that's a deliberate choice from Apple, so you can still grip the sides of the iPad without touching the screen. So again, really thoughtful design from Apple there as well, especially as this is a device that you might want to hold one-handed. There's also now Touch ID, which is great, and that sits at the top along with the volume buttons, and it looks like they've moved the volume buttons up deliberately to make room for the second generation Apple Pencil, which you can now just snap onto the side like you can with the Pro models. So that's pretty cool. On the bottom, you'll notice there's now a USB-C port instead of lightning, which is great. It's kind of hard to believe that the lightning port is still around. I really hope at some stage Apple will get rid of it from the iPhones as well. Maybe that's wishful thinking, but we can hope to dream. That being said, this is only a USB-C port and not a Thunderbolt port like we have on the Pro models or the MacBooks, but still, it's a huge improvement. On the back, you'll notice a new 12 megapixel camera, and this is actually the first iPad mini with a camera bump. There's also an updated 12 megapixel ultra wide on the front in case you're someone that uses your iPad for filming things. In terms of other features and updates, the new mini actually has an A15 Bionic chip, which is the same as what you'll find in the new iPhone 13. So you should have no issues with speed or the snappiness of the display. It's actually a 40% faster CPU and an 80% faster GPU since the previous iPad mini. Aside from that, the iPad mini also supports 5G if you buy the cellular version, and of course also now supports Wi-Fi 6 across the board. So guys, in summary, I'm a huge fan of this new iPad mini. It's been awesome for note taking, watching videos, just lying around the house, reading it, and it's also been great for gaming as well. In fact, when it comes to gaming, I could see this form factor being an interesting competitor to the new OLED Nintendo Switch when that comes out. I'll be doing a video on that soon, by the way, so definitely stay posted for that. Overall, though, I think this is the most exciting product as part of the September event, and I think it's going to be a really popular device alongside the iPad Air and the iPad Pro. One question you might be asking yourself, though, is whether you should be getting one of these or the iPad Air. 
And to keep things really simple, I think ultimately it's just gonna come down to the size that you want and also your budget. If you want something ultra portable with all the power of Apple's latest tablets, then this is probably a great option for commuting, traveling, or using at home as a smart hub controller in your kitchen. If you want something a little larger and maybe more reminiscent of a piece of paper for note taking, I'd probably recommend the Air or the Pro for this. To be honest, I kind of wish you could use this as a car screen because the one in my car absolutely sucks. But so far as I know today, CarPlay doesn't work on iPads which is kind of annoying, something I hope Apple fixes soon. Also at $500, this is now a good entry level iPad that has pretty much all the features of the Air, so that's a really great price if you're on a tight budget. So guys, that's it for this video. Remember to watch my iPhone 13 video for my thoughts on that, and also to subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the video. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.